How's it going? Good, good. How are you today? How's it going? Happy <laughs> Wednesday. Here we are. I'm Lisa. I'm Gary. And we are here with your up-to-date real estate information. That's right. Our top story today is what to expect when you get into escrow. Oh my goodness. We have had some exciting things happen lately. We have been doing this for a long time. Those of you that don't know, I'm a third generation realtor. We've been doing this for a long time and there is always something. And we have had some somethings lately, uh, which is why experience matters to get things closed that uh, frankly, I don't think would have closed. <laughs> no, they wouldn't have. They wouldn't have with uh, someone that didn't have as much experience as we did to get our clients to the finish line. So uh, we have a couple of stories to share with you today um, about what to expect when you get into escrow in today's environment. <laughs> yeah. The key there is to get into escrow. Uh, we've heard the rumors and the stories. We've been involved in them. Multiple offers. We've heard of 64 offers on a property. And you know what that means? 63 people walked away disappointed that they didn't get their new home. We've heard locally and nationally and statewide stories that, that are close to that, but I think 64 is the most offers I've heard on one property. That is just, I mean, that's the kind of market we're in. It's definitely a seller's market. Um, so we're going to talk about, you know, getting into escrow. So once you accept an offer, then you open escrow. So we're going to talk about that little section here. Um, Cause once we get into escrow, you have a whole new set of disclosures, paperwork, um, and inspections and things that happen during that period. So that's the part we're going to talk about today is escrow. So what's one of the first things that happens? First, one of the first things that happens is usually the buyers, borrowers, buyers slash will do a home inspection on the property. It's very difficult to walk through a property and know what the electrical systems are, what the plumbing systems are. Oh my gosh, that list is almost endless. You can't see through the walls. So you walk through, you're thinking, hey, this is great. Let's get a home inspector and have them go through the property. And believe me, there's not a home inspector out there, not one that won't find a lot, well, let's say problems with the property every time. Never had a clean home inspection come back, and ever. What are some common things that you always find? Common things are usually surrounded with the hot water tank. Now in California, we're prone to earthquakes. We haven't had one in a while. But usually it's earthquake strapping, which changes. No, it hadn't changed in a couple years. There for a while it changed every year, strapping and blocking. It's got to be vented properly. Uh, they've got flex cable running in the HVAC systems that was done as standard of practice for a number of years. They always find that that needs to be solid uh, gas pipe instead of flexible pipe. Those are a couple. Yep. And then the smoke detector and water heater requirements. Um, they're usually the three main things we see on every single uh, home inspection that need to be addressed. So of course, when we work with us, We'll make sure we address those things up front because we know they will be on the home inspection down the road. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> the, the, the smoke detectors are a federal requirement and the hot water tank is a California requirement. But a requirement is a requirement. That's right. One other thing I'd like to throw in right here is that buyers have rights and sellers have obligations. That's right. I've heard him say that a few times before. Can you imagine? <laughs> Well, it's always the sellers or, you know, hey, I want to do this or I want to do that. And you have to go by the contract. So the seller is obligated and the buyer can basically, in the beginning, walk for pretty much any reason in the great state of California. Well, at least for the first 17 days. At least for the first 17 days. <laughs> then it kind of changes hats again. But let's oh. we're, we're talking about what happens when you open an escrow. Right, so another uh, fun part of this chapter of your home buying or selling experience is the appraisal. And given the huge amount of volume, the normal volume of the funnel in the whole country is about $2 billion Tri in, is tri it? I think billion. Oh, it's billion. $2 billion it's in mortgage uh, loan volume a year. And I think in 2020 they did four. Yes. And so double the number of loan volume went through 
And so that funnel didn't necessarily get bigger. They didn't hire twice as many loan officers and appraisers and underwriters and all that. So it has been challenging for the people in those roles to get the job done with the funnel, with the, with the water, with the fire hose still coming at you. So we've had some challenges with getting appraisals done in a timely manner and going through underwriting and things like that. Um, we've had a couple stories I was going to share that uh, we've had with appraisals just in the last couple weeks that one of the properties we had um, in escrow, of course, we were representing the buyer, multiple offers, and the property was a fixer property, needed some work. But we secured the property for our buyers, which was really exciting. First time home buyers, which is always so much fun to get them a home. And this property did need work. So uh, we had the appraiser come out. Oh my gosh, it was an appraiser that was known to be a challenging appraiser <laughs> who was fixated on the soils and a few cracks, normal cracks that were, you know, in the garage. And um, he wanted to know if we had a soils report and things. This is a property on a flat lot in an established neighborhood that has been there forever. There is no reason to think there's an issue with the soils. Well, he did come back and the appraisal did come in at value and then he called out some chip paint and some things he wanted to be repaired. Well, this property needed a roof anyway. The buyers were planning on doing a roof um, soon after closing escrow. There was no reason to go in and do these little repairs on raptor tails and chip paint when the property was going to be worked on right away anyway. So because it's a conventional loan, which means it had, they had 20% down, we had very well qualified buyers. There was no reason for these repairs to be called out on the property. So went back, I went back and talked to the lender and put it back on them to get these conditions cleared because they shouldn't have been um, called out. So we did and happy to say that that property has closed and very happy buyers, very happy sellers, and we got that one through. But it was a nail biter there in the middle. <laughs> yes, well, not unusual to have chip paint called out, let's say on an FHA loan, where somebody's putting three and a half percent down. They're a lot pickier as far as the lending requirements and their appraisal requirements on FHA, VA's even a more picky, pickier. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> VA. Uh, appraisers don't like chip paint. No, 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 no chip paint. The, the VA appraisers take care of the veterans, that's for sure. So it's not uncommon, but when somebody's putting down 20% it's a conventional loan, usually, unless prices have been skyrocketing way up, they go through, breeze through, not a problem. Yeah, there's two kinds of conditions when you go into the appraisal process. There's conditions on the borrower, and then there's conditions on the property. So that example I just gave was a condition on the property. The conditions for the borrower are things like, you know, your W-2, your tax returns, your credit score, the things that you as a borrower need to be qualified to buy the home, and then the property needs to be qualified. So I just wanted to talk about those two things because sometimes when we start talking about conditions, people get confused because there's two types, either the borrower conditions or the property conditions. Yes, and they get very strict on the borrower conditions. I mean, you know, hey, where did yes. this hundred and sixty dollar deposit come from? Oh, I was playing golf, had a real lucky day. Well, you know, oh, you're a gambler. No, that's <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's it's always now we're not surprised on things that the, they come back and ask for. Uh, you, you, it's you just fasten your seatbelt and hold on because, like we like to say, you know, focus on the baby, not being pregnant, because there's just a lot of things that go along, and at the end. You either are selling your home or buying a home, and that's the exciting part, but there are some, some there's, a, there's a path to hike along the way. There is, and I, I, our partner, Lindy, has always said, don't focus on the labor pains, focus on the baby. So they don't, right. nobody wants to hear about the labor pains in you know, three or four days, even though that's very stressful for the mother. They always say, show me the baby. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So we uh, had another one uh, like that was really has been one of the most challenging. I have talked to, uh, I think I've talked to everyone in the whole uh, possible people I could talk to. The county obsessor, the city of Ventura, the appraiser, the lender, the borrowers, the, I mean, you name it. It has been endless, endless, endless phone calls. Again, um, kept this deal together. Again, first time home buyers, very exciting. Um, but I know for a fact that that property would not have come together uh, without the years and years and years of experience that we have doing this, and uh, we know who to call. 
to get things through. Yes, yeah, so it's not Ghostbusters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, start with us. We'll make the calls. That's right. So then once we get through the appraisal process and, and satisfy all the conditions on borrower conditions and property conditions, then we come down to final loan approval. We do. And that's an important day for everybody. It, it starts off with the buyers getting a loan approval, but there's a difference between loan approval and final loan approval. So the final loan approval means, hey, the appraisal's in, every, all the conditions are met on the property and through the borrower. So at that time, the buyer can release all contingencies. Now, at that time, if the buyer were not to go forward, only after they release all contingencies, they could very well lose their deposit if they don't go forward and close the house. Big, big step. It almost never, ever, ever happens. Ever. And then that's when it changed back <laughs> where the uh, <laughs> seller has rights and then the buyer has the obligation to go forward and close the transaction. That's right. So then once we get final loan approval, the documents, loan documents go to escrow and then they get signed, then you get your funding, and then you close and record. Yay! Yay, yes. Happy day. You get your keys. That's right. Yes. <laughs> yes. We've been running around delivering keys this week, which is always one of the most fun things we get to do, uh, is deliver keys. So that's been great. We've also had one, I have here my little note, one great experience this week where we had a uh, uh, closing with another agent that is very experienced and it went so smoothly and the little things that come up just got handled because uh, we've all been doing this for a long time and nobody got all excited and you know freaked out or freak your client out because you just know you know what's going to happen you know how to handle it and it just ends up being a very nice transaction when um, you work with people with a lot of experience. <laughs> yeah, what's the, uh, the Be Calm t-shirts, Be Calm, this one. Be happen. Calm and Carry On. Yes, Be Calm, Escrow mm -hmm. Will Close. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, we uh, found, we learned something new th this week because we learned something new every day. Uh, the federal flood maps changed on January 21st, 2021. So just in case you were wondering what the new federal flood maps were and what date they changed, it just happened. And don't ask me how I know that, but that is the facts. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you thought you were living on a hill. You thought everything was fine. And then they changed the federal flood maps. And you think Noah's Ark's going to be coming around to any time. Yep, pretty sure. That's, de <laughs> that's definitely what the flood insurance pe people think, that Noah's Ark is coming any minute. <laughs> yeah, it was a windfall. You know? <laughs> don't look at that rainbow. They won't believe it. Oh, that's funny. This morning we were uh, out for our walk at the beach and uh, the, the, your phone, your weather app on your phone said it was pouring rain. Well, it wasn't. <laughs> we were out there getting our exercise in, trying to get it before the rain, but we didn't get any rain. <laughs> no, no, lots of surfers. In fact, there was a guy out there surfing without a wetsuit. Now, that was pretty brash. Yeah, I mean, it's only the beginning of March. That water looked cold to me. Yeah, everybody else had wetsuits on, you know, gloves, boots, the whole thing. It's the California coast, not the Hawaii coast. Oh, <laughs> so we have a few things, um, good news from the our California Association of Realtors website that regular unemployment claims dipped below 100,000, so that was really great news. With the opening of dining, even though in California here we're still outdoor dining, but it's open, and some of the other businesses that have been allowed to open, even in a limited capacity, has dipped our unemployment uh, numbers, which is great, great news. Um, and then another thing I thought was really awesome and interesting and gonna lead into our spring selling season is the California pandemic is getting better in the last seven days um, average, the new coronavirus cases in California fell to 115 day low um, at the end of February is a sign that the first, that the public health picture continues to improve, so we are Thrilled to hear that. I know New York, Texas absolutely. and what, Mississippi? Texas and Mississippi. Yesterday, they, you know, all their mask requirements and business, you know, things are all open again. So, of course, we are hoping to have that here as soon as possible. And we just uh, help somebody relocate to Mississippi. That's right. We have a dear, dear friends and clients who turned into sellers, but they moved to Mississippi. That's right. Now they're open. Yes, and they're open now. 
Um, so strong sales uh, hap uh, happen again in the month of February, and we will be getting the numbers, the official ones here, the next week we'll be reporting them here. But we um, have numbers. That's right. But we of course numbers. I have some, some uh, numbers because whenever I find some, I always want to share them. And these I thought were interesting and which kind of helps you understand our uh, issue with inventory and prices. The California statewide single family home median price now is 700000 That's median price with a year to year, so January to January, January of 20 to January of 21. Um, is up 21.7%, so 22% statewide. Yeah, that's for the whole state, up 22%. So no matter where you're living in California, the median price is up 20%. Right, and the median... 22%. 22%. The median days on market, just because it was there, is 12 days. So as a seller, you need to be ready to move. <laughs> that's right. And then uh, Ventura County, our, our numbers here, the median is uh, sale, home price, sales price, 776000 in January of 21 versus 660 in January of 2020. It means we're up 17.6% in Ventura County. And then I was looking down the list because the report I was, re I was reading was by county in California. And I was trying to find the highest one. Well, it happens to be our neighbor here, Santa Barbara County, is up... 36.3% year over year. So the median price in Santa Barbara County, 920,000 uh, in January of 21 versus 675,000 uh, last year in January. So like I said, 36.3%. And I think Gary and I were, t were talking some of that spike, I think is we've had some very expensive over 10 million, over $20 million properties uh, sell in Santa Barbara County last year. And I think when you sell those really big numbers, it moves, it, the, whole it moves the whole median up. So I think that there were quite a few, um, over 5 million, over 10 million, over 20 million. I think there um, were a couple over 30 million. That sold. So those prices do, um, I think, skew up our, our median. But still, and of course, Berkshire Hathaway, we were uh, on the different sides of several of those super luxury properties, which is always exciting. Oh yeah, well I think it's really got to be exciting. Just think if we were sitting around and say, hey, what's our budget for a new house? Let's say thirty million. <laughs> <laughs> you've got it? you've got options then. <laughs> oh oh uh, 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 over the world, I see that Tim McGraw and Faith Hill just listed their Caribbean island for about that, somewhere in that range. So if you're looking for an island, we're happy to help you find one. <laughs> yes, yes, we do. And then uh, LA County, which of course most of our, our biggest feeder market here in Ventura County is LA County, and their median almost 700,000, 697,660. So let's call it 700,000 uh, January median price in LA County, and then a year ago 617,000. So it's up 13% year over year in LA County. So those are Ventura County, and then our neighbor to the north and our neighbor to the south. Yeah, so it's about 700000 in L.A. County. It's about 775000 in Ventura County. And it's 920000 in Santa Barbara County. Yeah, and that's the, the median. I think our average sales price now in Santa Barbara County is, what, a million one on the median? Yeah. I think it's so. So yeah. I think a it is. average is even more than that. And I think our year-to-date, if we went to average sales price instead of median, is up over 20% yeah. in Ventura County. So yeah. those are the numbers. Yes. So that is what to expect. Um, some of the things to expect when you get into escrow. And we have been doing this, like we said, for a very long time. And we'd love to talk to you about your situation. If you have any questions, there is no question too small. We love to talk about real estate. And so you can always find us here live and happy to answer your questions. Or you can text us, call us. Uh, smoke signals. We answer them all. <laughs> we do. We do. Yes, we are available. We have a team. We're absolutely ready to go. So visit us at GaryAndLisa.com. Your real estate edge. Okay, that's a wrap. That's